I don't think this house has had a single permit since 1880 when it was built. If I don't move and get it done, by the time I'm done fiddling around, it'll all be rock hard. Welcome to my living room. Um, the electrical, well, we won't even talk about that. Or as we call it in my house, the place we try to avoid. Before I can wire, I need a plan. I'm gonna have to open all this up and reframe it. Deal. All right, we have a plan. Deal. Beautiful. <laughs> Remember how I was gonna order more flooring for the project? Yeah. So it's discontinued. I'm an idiot. I mean, I really, I, I'm, I really did myself in here. Welcome to my living room. Whew. Or as we call it in my house, the place we try to avoid. <laughs> this is an absolute disaster of a construction project. This living room here basically is a great big space that never gets used because it's unusable. It's cold, it's useless, the floor is sloping all over the place. When you get up to walk around in this space, you almost want to fall over. Your vertigo is so bad. We've got a lot of work to do here to fix the structure, turn this into a place that we want to hang out in, but most of all, modern rustic, right? This is our goal here. That means ripping out all the walls, turning this open to open concept so that we can have guests and company. I want to see 100 people in this house all having one conversation. Stay with us. We've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> so I'm standing here in the window well of the original foundation of the house. That's right. This house needs a lot of help. So. No matter how experienced you are, when you're dealing with stuff like this, it's time to call the structural engineer. I wanna just relax, take a deep breath. These guys are not as expensive as you might think, okay? For about 800 to 1,000 bucks, you can get expert advice, plus a stamp to go on your permit that says, all this is done in accordance with my brain, and it's better to have his brain on the paper than your own, and then that gives you the ability to follow all of his protocols, fix all your structure, and get out of the window wells and get on with living your life. Whew. Can't wait till he shows up. Okay, so Ethan, we're gonna go modern rustic. And in design world, that means open concept. That's what everyone's doing now. Open ceiling. So we wanna expose the floor joists and the tongue and groove floor from above, right? And have it all exposed. We're gonna try to move as much wiring and heating into corners and, yeah. and false ceiling action as we can but we want to have a beam. And since we need a structural beam in this room, we like it because we really don't have a tall ceiling. Right. It's a really big room for exactly seven and a half feet. <laughs> kind of is lousy, really. I don't know how many layers are in the ceiling. I'm guessing almost two inches, maybe more. I guess we'll find out once the demolition <laughs> right? starts. But the, so the secret for me is, if I'm gonna put a beam from basically that side of the room, which is that wall, into this interior wall. What does the building code require from me now for support for that beam? So anything we do, any renovations we do today, yep. have to meet today's building code. So whatever was here before, once we go ahead and start trying to change it, right. it doesn't matter how that was built or if it met the code from 20, 50 years ago. There's no ago. grandfather rule if you're making modifications. That's right. Exactly. That's exactly right. So whatever we design today, any new beam uh, has to be designed to today's code. Okay, so if we have a, let's call the exterior structure an actual four inch, then my beam needs to reach right to the exterior cladding. Because if I'm, unless I'm, a beam needs to sit on at least three inches of solid material. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. So for, that they can't slip beam. off. Yeah, that's okay. the idea. So you don't have an accidental force right. shifted off. And normally for beams, you have a lot of pressure yep. at each end. So you need enough bearing resistance, bearing area exactly. to transfer that weight without crushing. So an actual two by four beam means that I'm going to have a little bit of wiggle room up there. So if I, if I have, let's say 12 or 16 exact feet, I could get a beam at 15, 11. So it's easy to install. 
split the difference on each end. I still have three and a half inches of meat on each side to carry that. I'm okay. Yeah, as long as you have that bearing, yeah, okay. then we're good. All right, and what do we need to use to tie it all together? Is it just nails or just a gravity? What are we using? So normally what we like to recommend is a little above and beyond the building code requirements. Sure. It's, and it's still simple, it's just a clip angle. A little L-shape. Yeah, something that goes uh, up and over. Thin piece of steel from the post to the beam. Yep. An L-shape and, and you nail directly into each member. Okay. Instead of toenailing. How do you feel about if I have a, a post the same width as my beam, do yeah. you want to have another 2x4 or something traveling up past the beam so that there's no rollover? That's also a great idea. And then uh, yeah. that, that's important when you're underneath structure. What if, like in this situation, I'm planning on cutting all the joists out. So I'm going to need an interior wall and you're going to spec that out for me, right? Usually within two feet, something that's measured and cut to fit, right? And yeah, then so carry the load and then I'm going to cut it out. I'm going to slide the beam up. I'm going to add joist hangers for, and then jack them all in. Oh my God. <laughs> That's going to be a busy day. <laughs> but once I have that beam in place, it, there's not much risk of rollover, is what I'm saying. Once the new beam is, is yeah. up in between the joists? Right. No, because you'll also probably do a, a temporary support underneath the beam before the actual before post, the actual goes, post in goes in. Well. Yeah. yeah. OK, good point. All right, so is there any problem? This room is an actual 16 feet long. Is there any problem going LVL in this situation? Again, it all depends on, on how much weight we have coming from above. Okay. Is it just the floor or do we have the floor and the roof uh, supported? Generally just the floor, actually, yeah, yeah. in this case. So in, in this case, if it's just the floor, LVL, uh, I mean, LVL will definitely be acceptable. You yep. have depths up to 18 inches. Right. Uh, obviously, if you're going flush beam, we want to keep it as small as possible. To okay, so in that case, if I have a 2x10 floor joist package up here, which I think I do, which yep. is not acceptable no matter what's going on. <laughs> not, not at this um, uh, full if I, if I put an LVL 2x10 in, is a triple enough over 16 feet? Or am I better to go 12 and then try to cap it all with something decorative after the fact? You're probably going to be looking at 12, okay. just based on my experience. But sure. again, every case is different, so I'd have to do the numbers. run the numbers. But it's yeah. good for me to be thinking, don't be disappointed if we have to go 12. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so for my design, then I'm going to think I'm going to I'm going to clad the beam itself anyway, so I can cover all of the joist hangers, and yep. then when I'm finished, I'm going to have a painted ceiling and then an exposed raw finished beam. Takes a little extra work, but I think it's going to be pretty, and better be safe than sorry. I guess our goal with the reality renovation is to show show people how when you have a plan and you execute it. It, it, it's not scary. It's not dramatic. It's just, you just got to do the work. Like I'm so tired of TV shows with all their drama. <laughs> like for God's sake, you make, the, you scare the living daylights out of people and they're trying anything with all of the, you know, pros screwing up, but they're not, they're just, they're just creating drama. They write it into the script. I mean, in the amount of times I've seen a guy goes, well, well, that's, Gosh, we didn't expect that, or we framed this wrong, or we ordered this wrong, or yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you might as well just put a sign on your head, I'm doing this for the first time. I think, because yeah. to those pros when we yeah. watch those shows, it's just like, you've got to be kidding well, me. Well, and I think viewers see through all that. I, I hope so. <laughs> because, like when you're a pro, you don't order the windows the wrong size. You, you use a tape measure, not a guess. Wait a minute. Now, you, you know... Uh, what? Nothing. No, say it. <laughs> say it. Nothing. You might have to cut the hole to install the window yeah, second time. that's the situation <laughs> I was talking about. Yeah. But I ordered the window the right Max size. was there. <laughs> Listen, we all make small mistakes while we're working, but yeah. the, the planning and execution, it should go flawless. Exactly, yeah. Right? S have a plan, stick to it, don't change it, everything works. Simple. Mm -hmm. Right? One foot in front of the other. You'll get there. <laughs> so here's a quick little project update for you. Because we did the kitchen first, we were already familiar with the way that the uh, building was structured. So 
remember Ethan came by, we, the structural engineer, we had a conversation, we had a plan, and, and it was right because this side of the house is the same way. It's a two by eight, clear span, over 20 feet long. That's crazy. Um, the original house in this front room actually had no interior walls. It was all lath and plaster. And then somebody added this wall area over here to become a bathroom. This wall here, I added myself just to have some separation so I could have a storage area while I was working on the kitchen. And with that understanding in mind, we know that this is going to be carrying a lot of the load. It takes a lot of the bounce out of the, stair, out of the floor upstairs when you're walking around. So we still have to open up both ends of the wall and put in our beam just to stabilize everything and take a little bit of pressure off. If you look up at this beam right above us here, Max, you'll see there's a split in that joist. That's just starting to come apart. It needs something to help hold it up. <laughs> you always love to see a split joist, you know? That's just like one step away from the tub coming crashing through the floor. Um, over here, remember we have a concrete pad outside and I guess at some point this had a commercial use. So this used to be a front door. That would have been a cold front door because it would have got all the wind in the winter time rushing across that empty field. Unbelievable. Um, the window over here has had repairs done uh, badly. I don't know what's going on. Lots of wood rot, weird things going on here. So we're going to have to rip the siding off the outside of the house. We're going to reframe and patch this up properly. Get some weather seal going on. Uh, very important whenever you're working on the house, if you're going to renovate the inside, you've got to be ready to commit to renovating the outside, especially in an older home. A lot of the water diversion system on the house is not in place, and so you get wet areas. Like yesterday it rained, and all underneath this window is wet again. Whenever you pull out insulation and, and it's still stuck to the wall, it's a good sign that you've got moisture penetrating the, the weather barrier of the house. So. It's just a bit of a mess. Um, the electrical, well, we won't even talk about that because whoever did the electrical work here obviously never pulled a permit. I don't think this house has had a single permit since 1880 when it was built. Um, it's really interesting. So when you're renovating something like this, as long as you're not tearing apart the structure, you're just re replacing the lath and plaster. It's not that big of a deal. It, it's a little more involved than you would think, but it's not major work. It's just a minor repair. Now, all of this plumbing, it used to go upstairs. I guess at some point there's a bathroom upstairs. I have no idea. I don't have any pipes coming through the floor upstairs. I guess they're just all cut off right in the flooring. Blows my mind. Um, we got to rip all this out because there's no venting. This is a, this just another drain to something else that doesn't exist anymore. Unbelievable. Uh, yeah. Very typical. So we gotta peel it all back, clean it all up, vacuum it all out. We're gonna re-nail all of these joists back to the studs and the balloon frame, just to make sure that we have some structural integrity there. And then we're gonna just sheet it all up, close it up, make it one great big pretty living space, and maybe have a little bit of fun with some finished carpentry. We'll see what happens. But to be honest with you, I just can't wait to get the drywall on. Oh, one more thing. This is nasty. Listen. I don't know who came up with this idea of patching up a hole on the outside of the building with drywall. That's 1944. Can't treat drywall like plywood. It doesn't work that way. Obviously, the water diversion system here is not functioning. This is just one great big box of mold. I'm going to have to open all this up and reframe it. These are two by threes. I don't even know what's going on there, but that's got to be dealt with. Okay, so now that the walls have been knocked down, yeah. what's your vision for the room? Like, I mean, there's the flooring. <laughs> <laughs> we got to put up new windows because those windows have got to go. They've been there for too long. Yeah, we, we need to do some soundproofing because that part of the house is close to the road. Absolutely. Good. So we're going to do some soundproofing. Mm -hmm. We're putting in windows that don't have any function. Mm -hmm. And so there's no air leaking. Mm -hmm. That'll be dramatic. And it gives you such a nicer view, too, out in the country. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've got to screw down all of the flooring. I've got to put in floor leveler. <laughs> a lot of Everything has to be rewired. <laughs> Everything that needs new insulation. The floor joist package for the second floor is <sighs> continuous, end to end. So we've got to put in a beam. I know. A trampoline upstairs and on the main floor. <laughs> is that what you're calling yeah, it? Yeah, oh it's my just God. crazy. 
You walk in there <clears throat> carrying something heavy, and you just feel the and it's the, the I waves. Know. I know. I'm glad God nobody's fixed. broken through the floor yet. Ugh. Um, but once we're done, mm. you know, it'll look normal. Well, the room's a lot more different now. I mean, we've got a beam in to support the weight. Uh, we got floor joists that go from one side of this room all the way to the other. It's over 20 feet, and that's a little ridiculous. But uh, now that we've got one great big open space, it's kind of weird. Now you got to sit back and kind of take it all in again, you know, because we've got to figure out what we're going to do with this space. Um, the exterior walls, my goodness, it's just, it's a bit of a mess. It's doors and windows have been relocated more than once. So this structure has been a little compromised. I've got some repairs to do, which is why I put that other wall up. Anyway, that won't take much to get all that fixed up, but uh, before I can wire, I need a plan. So, Mitch, are you okay to come in here for a minute? Yeah. I need help figuring out what we're gonna do with this room. Okay. Like, it's, Hi. <laughs> so, it's oh, nice oh. and big, but what are we gonna do with it? Like, how, do, yeah. how do you want me to wire this thing? Like, I have, I have one option that's right out of the gate. I can just put in the basic amount of plugs, um, Everything can be one circle for the lights, just a basic number of pot lights, maybe six for in each half. Yeah. I mean, anything else? Do we care? Um, so are you going to have like, so you said six electrical yeah, six, outlets? Well, six lights on each each half of the room. Um, I'm talking about electrical outlets though. Uh, minimum, you know, probably two on each wall. Mm -hmm. One over here. Yeah. Yeah, just the basic code requirements. Okay. Does that work? Yeah. Are we going to have any need for... Are we going to put a TV on the wall in here anywhere? Well, I think it would be nice to have it as an option um, because there's, you know, I can picture like an L-shaped sofa here, family gathering. That would be the right wall to use Possibly, for the yeah. TV or even, you know, a couch um, situated here, TV on that. I mean, it's such a big Fireplace space. Fireplace even. I'm going to be, a... yeah, I want to raise the windows on, on that side. Oh. Okay, so we could actually put furniture underneath. We could do a sectional coming off that wall. Well, so then so the, tra options. the traffic flows behind the furniture. True. So or if I put one plug in the middle of that wall over there, yeah. and then if you wanted to make it a TV wall, then it's easy to fish down and add the plug for the TV. Right. Okay. Mm. And I do the same thing over here. I can put the plug in the middle of the wall so we could fish and move it up there if we wanted to. Yeah, exactly. Because I'm allowed 10 plugs. The circuit's only going to have six or seven. Mm -hmm. I got room to add. So maybe that's a better plan. Let's just get it finished. I agree. Well, there are so many different options you could do with this room right, right? now. It could, be a, it could be a family room. It could be a, a formal dining room. Um, yeah, huge dining room. You know, mom would be in the kitchen. She yeah, can yeah. oversee her children here, possibly. Um, it's okay. It's I love the the open concept is awesome. So if we just went with pot lights, yeah, didn't put anything in the middle. No. Then if anybody ever wanted to add to the pot lights for a pendant, or right? A, they could. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll keep it simple. Now. Um, on my on the Instagram, we uh. asked if we could get some help with <laughs> yeah. ideas. Yeah, any kind of a design wall. Yeah, well, I saw people, a few. You were thinking this wall here. Um, I, I don't know yet. It all depends. Um, it could be interesting because I'm thinking the door I want to get rid of, right? Yes. Because it's a little tight here for moving furniture up yeah, and down. Yeah, so no door. So if I clean all this back to maybe here, I'll bring the light switch to the other side of this stud. Yes. And then it'll just be a little bit of an open, one or two steps open wrap around. Yeah. It's less than 24 inches. I don't need any railing. Mm -hmm. So it's just nice and big and open. There's so not what? a lot of wall left here. Not a wall left. Um, if you put a TV on that wall, accenting it isn't going to matter. I know. I know. That's why I'm not too sure what to do. And that's a really big, that's a 16 foot wall, right? Yeah. <sighs> I, anyways, I had suggestions for a shiplap. Or this Art Deco stuff that's right, not right. going to go because we're still trying to stick with the modern rustic look. Okay. Um, well, what do you think of shiplap? What if we did a wood wall? I would love to get some shiplap in here. Yeah? Yeah. Well, if we're going to do that, I'd probably do the outside wall. Oh, really? Yeah. What's the length on that wall? 20 feet. Yeah, that's what I it's thought. It's big. Wow. But it's big enough that it would accent the whole room no matter how it's used. Yeah, but I'm thinking of... 
when you're entering into the room from the kitchen, when yeah. you're entering into the room from the main entrance, everybody sees that's gonna be standing out. Like I get this one would be, but so will this one, right? Because you've opened it past here. I don't know. What do you think? Okay, I'm thinking the uh, ship lack can go anywhere afterwards. We'll we'll deal with yeah, that later. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Let's let's, I'm, yeah. let's, let's get it drywalled <laughs> and primed at I, least. At I this like point. the whole decor part. Okay. Okay. I'll let you do the building, and then we can talk further. Let me get it closed. Yeah. And then we'll worry about how to finish it afterward. Deal. All right. We have a plan. Deal. Beautiful. <laughs> Sweet. Oh boy, it feels really good to be finally taping and closing all this up. There's uh, so many weird things going on with this old house. Oh. We're going to uh, show you a few tips and tricks now about doing drywall when you're blending old and new houses together. Because uh, there's always a surprise that you can solve with, <laughs> uh, with a little creativity. And years and years of watching guys on the job site and learning all their hacks. Number one, if you have a hole and you've got to repair it, it's kind of like a hollow point bullet. And you want to just run a couple of passes until you're all the way through. This is such a great technique, it's worth revisiting. And I'm going to score the brown paper from the back side. Both sides. We're going to do the same here. Break it and then hold the and then peel it from the paper, leaving the paper on the front. One of the most amazing benefits is that the white paper on the front of the drywall is thinner than the drywall tape that you would buy to patch it with. So it actually creates a lot less work when you go to finish. You're going to take your drywall compound, leave it on the inside of that framing of the cut. Okay, we're going to take it and we're going to put a little bit on the inside edges of all of our patch as well. And we're just going to press it in. You're just embedding the drywall tape. And you want to do this just once, okay? If you work it too much, it's going to wrinkle because of the moisture and it'll cause you all kinds of pain. You can come back and do another coat and it should be done with a four by 10 knife like this. The second situation I see a lot of people commenting about is they need to check and do an inspection on their valve or they want to change the valve from the back side. You can buy one of these, spring-loaded trap door, okay? They work great. Put pressure on the single tab first because it will slide and you push it over and you rest this in and it snaps back in place. The next, the next trick I'm going to show you is actually it answers a few different questions. Um, what do I do to fill big gaps what about if I'm going from a new wall to an old wall and there's lots of damage or it's lath and plaster and there's lots of damage, okay? Or if the old wall is a different thickness. These situations are all taken care of if you own one of these guns. Having a foam gun gives you lots of control. This becomes the backing. It also is an adhesive between the different materials so you don't get cracks. You don't need to apply any paper. <laughs> That's amazing. And don't worry about how much of a mess it makes. Remember the goal here is that when that's done drying, it's expanded in behind, got solid so you can trim off the face and have a backing to do your taping. So I'm just gonna tape out the joint here a little bit real quick. I made it a nasty mess on purpose to show you how easy it is to fix. There we go. Run your mud off the side of this knife here. Flat taping is the process of just going on one surface and not going around the corner. And you can push that up as nice and tight as you want, and then we'll press it in. Now that we've got that pressed in, ah, you don't have to wait till tomorrow to come back to fix it. And I'm gonna measure off a piece of tape. I'm gonna get a nice straight edge. Pre-fold it. Here we go. We have a nice flat surface up top, so I'm going to use that to trust my line. Gentle pressure all the way across, holding the knife flat against the wall. There we go. So here we go. I've got tape. Let's get this out of here. Okay. Oh, the tape's gone, but I still got that red stuff left. I've got brown paper showing. I've got dark pencil. I don't care, even if it's marker. 
There is one solution for all your problems, and if you're taping your house, you've got to have this can on you at all times. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Yeah, if you're a fan of the channel, you've seen me use it before. I put this on everything, okay? Brown paper, no problem. Oil-based primer. Red tape, no problem. Oil-based primer. Marker, no problem. Oil-based primer with the pigment. Look at that. This is just disappearing. I'm doing an infomercial here. Oil-based primer works on everything. They even have an odorless formula of an oil primer just for transitioning from oil to latex so that you don't have your paint peeling off over time. And before anybody starts putting it in the comment section, no, Kills did not sponsor this video. <laughs> I just love the stuff. Now we're gonna get away from the traditional drywall compound. We're gonna get into the quick set mud. And we're gonna show you everything that it can do. We're gonna make a little volcano on the hawk. There we go. And here we go, ready? Now we're gonna go for it. We're gonna go for it. Making a mess, that's okay. We're not gonna worry about it because this reaction happens so fast that if I don't move and get it done, by the time I'm done fiddling around, it'll all be rock hard. Here we go. And fill. The living room space. Mm -hmm. It's almost a multifunctional. You can design it however. Like I'm talking about because of the space and how it, the size of it. It's a big room. It's if, a big room. With the bathroom removed, it's a big space. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Um, I don't know why they put a bathroom there. Is it just a dumb spot? No, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Made the whole house feel tiny. So with with the removal of the bathroom, mm -hmm. it's created a. a very large space right where you can situate your sectional however you want it to there's yeah, yeah. three different walls that there's you can... three different design options exactly. to make that room functional yeah right? so we're we're putting in the new big picture window mm. but we're gonna put it high enough up that it'll put a sectional underneath Perfect. it if you want to yes and then it'll still provide a certain degree of privacy from the street because the house is raised up off the road exactly yeah that'll be nice um, I think it's going to change the personality of the home when we've done that like really dramatically. Absolutely. I don't think people will be able to even recognize the before and afters of that no, house. No, no. Everything changes when you make that space big. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's like one of those, rip out a couple walls, put in a little bit extra shoring and support. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, it's like, wow. Right? Yep, and then with you opening up all the walls between the kitchen and the living room space. Yeah, yeah everything's um, gonna change. Everything's going to change. I mean, you could be cooking, you could be washing the dishes and have a full view of yep. exactly what's going on in the living room if you're entertaining at the time. Yep. If you're watching your kids, watching, you know, when they're playing in that room or whatever. It's funny because when I first walked into that house, it was just like, that's stupid, that's stupid, yeah. that has to go, that walls. has to go. Mechanical yeah. can stuffed here, we'll put in a pantry, hide it in the wall, done. Exactly. And here we are. 
And yeah. We're doing it. Mm -hmm. All in. Yep. Go team. Hey, Jeff. Yeah, baby. I brought the color deck. Nice. All right. <gasps> Let's have a peek. Uh, oh, right? wow. It's this coming. is so coming. coming together. I know. It's starting to feel like a house. Not like a job site, right? Great job. Thank you. You were only here for like 48 hours. I mean, it was already drywalled, <laughs> right? I just had to trim out the windows and I'm on second coat. Yeah. Now, so. Beautiful. Great job. Okay, let's have a look at the wheel. I'm just gonna put this away. Yeah, couch. I'll go right there. Right here. Oh, you'd prefer, oh yeah, right. Sorry, my bad. Yes. How big is yes. this bad boy anyway? Because I feel like it's gonna be off the wall in the middle of the room no matter what we do. Probably yeah. have a whole Hi, Matthew. traffic area there available. <laughs> All right, Smarty, let's see what we got. You got any original thoughts? Oh, I have- Or initial thoughts? Um, so I want to build off of the kitchen. Okay. I want to change the front room Oh, I didn't know it came with an index. Yeah, the back of the deck, you got all the names, right? Mm -hmm. it tells you what tells page. You page. Awesome. Page 21. Okay. Well, leaf 21. So we can start by pulling that color out and see what the recommendations are. Mm -hmm. Because every one of these leaves are six colors that all go together. Right. Not necessarily yeah. the same base paints. Yeah, yeah. So this is like designing for dummies, right? <laughs> so there's it's your whirlwind. whirlwind. So did you want to go a darker color in here? Like super dark, something lighter. Um, do we have the flooring around somewhere? Yes. Let's pull that in here. Right here. It's a big room. Yeah, exactly. So I like this guy, because we have tons of sunlight in here. The point is, yeah, if you if you don't go dark enough, it's yeah. gonna look like the same it, color. Exactly. Okay, so exactly. you want to go? That's personality plus, eh? Oh yeah. And that one is called... And can you imagine when the lights are all kind of like bouncing off of it? Well, like in the morning? Yeah. That'd be really awesome. Yeah. Okay. Victorian, so, Victorian pewter. pewter. I love it. So we have Whirlwind in the kitchen. That's on page 21 as well. I'd love to see what silver charm looks like in the front and then we can car and then carry it into the bathroom, maybe? Upstairs. Yeah right up to the loft. And do that on the window wall and leave the rest of it yeah. kind of off whitish. Yeah. So I would paint upstairs Radisson. Okay. Okay. Call that the loft. Why not spring thaw? That one? Yeah. Here. Yes. Right? Silver charm, I said here. Silver charm. Sorry, silver charm. We can do the spring thaw upstairs. Not this one. It's, it's, I, I, it's too I gray. See, you find it too gray. Yeah. You don't forget the, um, the texture on the ceiling upstairs. Yeah. If you start adding gray and there's texture, you're going to get shadows. It's going to look really dark. Oh. And it's really going to show all the imperfections of our texture. Even though we have tons of window. No, we don't have tons of window up in the loft. There's well. Two little ones. It only gets afternoon sun. Well, I mean, it's tall. I mean, it does get a lot of afternoon sunlight. The more color you put in there, the more you're gonna see the, the mud work mm. and the texture work, okay? <laughs> so less is more. Okay, less is more. Better to stay wet, white. Silver charm, window wall, right? Front yes. hall? Silver charm in the front hall, right into the bathroom. That's gonna look really, really good. In the bathroom? Yeah. Like you said, character. <laughs> okay, well, we got lots of lighting, so I know, that's exactly. Cool. That's why we got that All right, and then you come into here, you got the dark. Yes. And then we got all the pot lights. Mm -hmm. And then we're back into the whirlwind, going into the kitchen. Mm -hmm. That comes right to here, the whirlwind. You see how blue that looks? Yeah. Does that look blue? Amazing, eh? <laughs> it is amazing. Because we're using the LED lights. Right. I'm actually really kind of freaked out about that. <laughs> that's, that's the right color. Okay. That's freaky. All right. So this is spring thaw. So I got the main stairs. I got this room. Yep. I got kitchen, yep. front hall. I got bathroom. I got wall into the loft. Mm -hmm. So then that is all continuous. Exactly. That gives the loft an accent wall because it's a little white. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
trim. Mm. Out of the can white? Out of the can white. You good with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. All right, all right. So I'll put that order in and I'll pick that up. We'll have it here for the painters. I think we'll order it on Monday, pick it up on Tuesday, so that it comes shook. Mm -hmm. It's ready to go all shook. Yeah. So I don't want it sitting over the weekend. No. Because then it'll be separated and then you know what painters do. They'll just work with it. And then every wall will have a different sheen. Mm. <laughs> so let me just go through this one more time. Mm -hmm. Cleaners come on Monday. Yes. Painters come on Wednesday. Right. Right? Yep. I'm thinking they're here three days. I agree. They'll probably bring three of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, that's nice. And the cleaners, the commercial cleaners. Yeah. Well, they're doing post-construction. Mm -hmm. So I have to have the rest of this taped and sanded and primed by the end of the weekend. Mm. Totally doable. Totally, totally doable. doable. Totally doable. Okay, cool. And then that was to be just about ready to live in. After that, all we got to do is put the rest of the flooring in and then... Yeah. Oh, main floor's yeah. done in like a week instead of three. <laughs> if I had to paint all this for myself, it'd take me a couple of weeks. Which is why... Right, I'm rusty. We're getting a little help. Yes, that's good. Cool, thank you. Matt thanks you too. <laughs> I just like to keep things simple. Simple. If we keep it simple, Keep it, keep it really clean, simple. I, I, I don't even know how to say it. I love the fact that I don't have to sit there and let a client pick something out that I know is going to look atrocious. Yes. <laughs> and you know, oh, every like, piece wow. of material that we use, all the material that we use in the videos are positively Jeff approved. Um, we get contacted on a daily <sighs> basis. Stop calling. Tons of emails. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's we nuts. actually sift through each email, uh, talk to the company. You know, we, we receive the samples of it. Well, we used to get a lot of samples, and I just I don't end up using their stuff. Well, we right? turn down sometimes, a lot of people sometimes as well. Sometimes we do, but man, most of the time it's like, why are you wasting everyone's time with this? I ask myself that question. Why do we waste our time with all that? So anyway, now I'm just like building my own house i just get to do what i want to do and you know it just makes life simpler from a planning phase because i already have all my systems and all, all the materials that i like to work with mm -hmm. and i know how they work together and there's never any question i'm i'm never disappointed with the result because i knew exactly what exactly. was going to happen yep. it takes the whole what ifs just right out of the equation mm. you know being in charge of it yourself i don't need to do up 3d designs and model it and all that other junk i'm just we're all sitting right here in the old <laughs> noggin right so I'll, it's like when i first walked through that house seven years ago max i walked through the house the first time i looked around i saw all the interior walls i checked out the layout and i said this is what it should look like yeah we saw the potential in it and that's what i'm building right now mm -hmm what I saw seven years ago. All right, so yesterday I was in here and I sanded the whole place and did the ceilings and primed them and sanded and primed all the walls and I've already done my touch-ups and my prime check and then rolled the ceilings. And now I'm ready to finish my floor, all my trim, and all my prepping of the trims and walls and door casings and baseboards and start painting the walls. Uh, we've got painting crew in here because they're giving us a hand. I got B-Rad here, my gas guy, and he's hooking me up with the new propane hot water tank. We were going to go with the tankless, but at the end of the day, he talked me out of it because of the whole um, problems with maintenance and warranty and parts and repairs. The industry has got some issues with sorting all that out in a timely manner. So we're just going with a, a good old fashioned hot water tank with the gas supply. Nice. Anyway, I'm just gonna jump through here. I got a bunch of finishing to do. I gotta finish the flooring and some trim, and I'm just gonna go real quick through all the steps that need to be done to finish off a room in order. So you guys got a bit of a template. You can always renovate any room yourselves. Nice.
<laughs> Perfect, every time. If you can feel it, it needs to be sanded. All right. Never paint until you're actually happy with the work. <clears throat> my system, I always paint the casings of my doors and windows first, especially on the sides. And don't be afraid to let it get on the wall, because then when that's all finished, it's so much easier to cut against that semi-gloss paint with your wall paint. We'll do this with all of our doors and windows. Then it's time to paint the walls. All right, so now we got everything sanded, primed. All of the window trims have been painted. So now it's time to cut and roll. All right, now we're gonna just uh, jump in for a coffee break. Come back for the before and afters. <laughs> okay, well, it's been a couple weeks since the painters have been here, and uh, to be totally honest with you, I am completely screwed. Yeah, it's been one of those years, right? 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020. There's no supply chain consistency anymore, folks, so if you follow the channel, you know that we have this awesome floor, it's vinyl, we did the whole main floor, and our supplier gave us more than we needed. So I had this brilliant idea. Wow, it'd be a great floor. We'll use it at my daughter's house. By doing that, and because of the way that the floor ended up going down, there was so much waste, I tried reaching out and ordering more to finish off the room. Put in the order, we're waiting to hear, we're waiting to hear, waiting to hear. Next thing we know, boof, bomb drops. They had discontinued the flooring. I'm an idiot. I mean, I really, I, I'm, I really did myself in here. So. <sighs> There's really not a whole lot of options. I've been racking my brains, I have a solution. I've gotta break the news to Michelle. She's gonna be really happy to hear this, of course. Um, but just for your own personal record, like moving forward, when there's disruption to supply chains for whatever reason, make sure you have everything on site first. Don't be like me. This will be the first time we do a video we can't show you the after, because we gotta move on, right? Yeah, I can't finish one room at a time anymore. I feel like I just gotta keep starting and starting and starting and starting and, and as things are available, we can finish. It's very confusing. Anyway, oh, I think Michelle's here. Come on in, baby. Hi. Hi. So remember how I was gonna order more flooring for the project? Yeah. So it's discontinued. Oh my gosh. Um, it's okay, I got a plan. Yeah. <laughs> Share yeah. it with me so now. So do you remember how we discussed earlier about we were gonna put a fireplace yeah. or not. Yeah, I hope that's not gonna change now. Well, I definitely need a fireplace now. Okay. It's just, I need Even to make more it so. yeah. bigger. Oh, bring it out more. Yeah, I called Christina. I'm gonna actually end up stealing all of the flooring we put under her house and taking really? it back. Really, she agreed to that? <laughs> She's a real, real sport. And then I, of course, <laughs> I have to put new flooring in. Yeah, But yeah. that's, obviously. You know, but at least we can get it because oh it's gosh. discontinued. There's not any more anywhere in the world, right? So I'm gonna take her kitchen area over there and then the Eden kitchen area yeah. and put it over here <laughs> And I'm gonna build a fireplace in the middle with some tile in front. Yeah, of course And that's how we're gonna solve this problem. Oh my gosh But with all that going on, I can't even move forward in the know, room until I have my fireplace. Listen, it's not a big deal um, We were gonna put the fireplace in anyways yeah. We're just changing the size of it. Exactly. And it's going to be a big one. Can, <laughs> yeah. Well, it, I think it look it look really great here, being the centerpiece. As soon as you walk in the front door, I, it'll tie um, the house together nice. I know. It, it, nothing wrong with this. Oh but, well. Hey. You know. 
So anyway, welcome to renovations. Um, I contacted my gas guy, mm. and uh, he, he's going to get a fireplace for us. But until I have one and it's actually here, <laughs> I can't even start building this thing because I can't trust the supply chain this year no. to go off the drawings offline. Mm -hmm. Because if they call up and say, "Oh, that's not available. This model instead," I have oh to rebuild everything. I'm just going to leave the project <sighs> and come back to this part later. It's time for me to start working outside. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, and it's this time, it's the perfect time to do it. I know. Take I advantage know. of the nice weather. It's okay. I mean, we don't live here anyway, so it's not a big deal. It's not deal. a huge deal, but you know, at the we'll same time. We'll do one room at a time, or we'll switch over to another room. I've always been needed. a great starter, and you know, uh, now I'm really not finishing. It's not just a punch list. Now it's like, uh, I hope you can deal with that. I am. Right. I'm trying to. Keep it it's... together. Keep it together. In with the good air, <laughs> yeah. out with the bad. <laughs> We got, we got lots we of time. We got this. <laughs> All right, guys, so we're going to be doing things a little bit differently here. Obviously, we're not doing before and after shots on these projects anymore. The channel's going to be morphing into more of a chronology as we go, you know, journey in time kind of thing. Mm. So you're going to have to bear with us. We're going to be doing a lot of bouncing around, giving you updates on the project. So if you'd like to join us on this crazy ride, click the link way over here. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And you're not going to want to miss this because it's going to get really interesting from here.